chair now recognizes the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Holtgren, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chairman Gensler, for being here today. Uh, I apologize. I had another committee, uh, so I had to step out for a few minutes. So if, if any of this is repetitive, I apologize, but there uh, are important questions for my constituents that I wanted just to, to ask and see if we could get uh, some answers for. One is I'm just concerned about the continued delays in uh, rulemaking process that are cr creating regulatory uncertainty uh, and affecting the ability of especially rural electric and farm uh, co-ops to plan for the future especially with regard to pending definition of swap dealer. After several apparent delayed votes uh, on that rule, I wondered if you could give my constituents any idea of what to expect, when to expect it, specifically wondering uh, on do what your prediction is uh, for the de minimis exception and where that will be set. Right. I'd, I'd like not to get out ahead of not just my commission, but the SEC. So it's 10 commissioners deliberation, and you're right, we, we had hoped to vote on this and then uh, uh, there was more collaboration over at the SEC to go on. Um, but in terms of uh, the de minimis, higher than where we were uh, without uh, pinning, pinning myself down because it's 10 commissioners weighing in. Um, and that with regard to the agricultural co-ops, uh, um, as we've said, uh, we've worked a lot with uh, the community, this Capra Volstead uh, community offering risk management uh, to, you know, through swaps to their members. Uh, we're going to uh, do our best to try to treat that like it's an affiliate uh, uh, situation. And then on the rural electric cooperatives and municipal uh, power authorities, uh, we've been working, I think it's now for six or eight months. They're, we're hoping that they'll come in and file a petition. We've been working actively with them. And then we put it out to public comment and get um, what's called a 4C exemption, but we have to we have to vote on it, put it out to public comment, and then uh, finalize it. We're doing something similar with the regional transmission organizations. Um, I hope we're close to them filing the actual petition, but we're not there yet. So the delay is their filing, or is the delay from your office? On the rural electric cooperatives, I just want to say we've been working very cooperatively. But y y yes, I mean we need. Because that community is so diverse, in fairness to them, to, to put this petition in front of us does take some coordination between a lot of actors in their community. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I will just, I can't speak for other commissioners, but I'm personally supportive of it. What's your best guess? You know, is it 30 days? Is it 90 days? Is it 120 days uh, for with, that specifically? And then also, you know, talked about with, dealing with the 10 members of, uh, you know, waiting for them to respond. With, with regard to the uh, finalizing these definitions, the entity definitions, uh, it, it, is, it is my hope, but I, can't tell you it wouldn't slide. It will be uh, through that this coming month, March. Um, with regard to the uh, cooperatives, the rural electric cooperatives, uh, if we could get back to you, but I was hopeful that we were going to have a petition in February, but I think, you know, I, I don't want to speak for them. If the petition came in, then we'd put it out to public comment. And so I'd say it's probably well into the spring, uh, you know, time, by the time we start to get the public comment. And that, I believe, takes 30 days as well. Okay. Again, I wasn't here for all of the debate on Dodd Frank, uh, but uh, I'm wondering just a little bit. I, you know, I know this. Uh, getting back to the the de minimis exception, um, the hundred million level to start with. You know, was that ever realistic? Uh, it, it just is, seems like such a low number uh, and opens it up to uh, so many questions out there again for for my constituents um, and just wondering again if there's a recognition of what I see as just an unrealistic number and hopefully a realization that uh, uh, it's it's we've gotten a lot of comments you're absolutely right on this from whether it's community banks and users and uh, we're taking them very seriously okay um, and maybe again, you've already discussed this a little bit, but would, uh, I, we've been hearing a lot of questions about this as well. And with uh, commercial hedging, uh, wondering if that will expressly be excluded from the activities that constitute swap dealing under the rule. Um, Congress laid out a number of important prongs. Market making uh, is one of them, and regular business is another one, if I might say. And so a lot of commenters came in and said, well, what's market making? Can you be more specific about that? And and, and in my mind, I'm just speaking in my mind, it's really about routinely making yourself available to others who need to hedge, not about your hedging. It's about 
routinely making. So it's not about some energy company that the, the purpose of what they're doing is hedging, you know, the oil in the refinery. In terms of regular business, we got a lot of comments about that. Can we be a little bit more specific and explicit about that? And again, I don't want to speak for other commissioners, but in you know my mind, I think there are things we can do there to help people out. And then of course, address the de minimis. Sometimes that's just a an easy way to help folks, you know, realize. Well, hopefully, it can be both. Uh, you know, because I both I think both create that uncertainty and continue that. So my hope is that it can be well defined. And, and from what I'm hearing from you is uh, you're pretty much saying you don't have control of it. We would probably argue you've got a little bit more control no, 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 I, you're I, I, letting I, on. I, I but uh, you know, we want to make sure that we're getting that assurance that, again, that, uh, that this isn't, um, you know, that there is going to be some e express exclusion of uh, commercial hedging. Uh, and again, people who aren't in the business of that or but just are in the business of trying to serve their customers uh, to run a I, business and, and knowing the uncertainties of agriculture I, and the commodities markets. I, right. I think that we will sufficiently address the issue of hedging in the context of a producer or merchant who, th th that's your point. Uh, well, thanks. I look forward to seeing that. So thank you very much. I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired.